So welcome back to the channel with me, Poison Smurf. Today we've got an absolutely fantastic video for you guys. If you enjoy it, do remember to hit that thumbs up. It really does help us over here at the channel. Any questions, drop them in the box below. We do try and get back to everybody. If you haven't done so already, maybe think about hitting that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell to be notified of any future videos. Watching our videos all the way to the end really is the best way to support the channel. But if you do want to go that extra step, check out our official merchandise in the description below. So today we're going to be talking about DPS builds. Not anything cheesy, not anything tacky, just straight up raw damage. Now up until this point in the game we've only really had two options. Now firstly you could go 6 tier or yellow, skill damage, pull out your turret, pull out your drone, sit behind cover with some measly ass weapon, doing little to no damage whilst your skills do the work. Alternatively, you could go 6 tier red, all out, best in slot, contractor gloves, foxes prayers, you know, all the good stuff. Same thing, we're going to have loads of weapon damage, but we're going to have poor skills. One thing these both builds do have in common, poor survivability. Now wouldn't it be perfect if we could get all the damage of an all red build, all the damage of a skill damage build, and have survivability on top of that? Well, great news guys, because today that's exactly what I've got for you guys. So let's take a good look at a maxed out all red DPS build. So starting off, most people are going to be good running gunner. Now why are they doing this? Obviously we're going to get 5% rate of fire on kill and of course we're going to get the 10% armor on kill. So moving on to weapons, I've gone with my beloved Eagle Bearer. As you can see we've got a nice high base damage here of 124.1k running at 750 RPM with 60 in the mag. As you can see this one's rolled 15% assault rifle damage, 21% health damage and 10% headshot damage. And of course, the talents, Eagle Strike and Tenacity. As far as my secondary is concerned, I've got my beloved M1A. As you can see, 338k base damage. This one's 320 RPM, 15 in the mag. As you can see, it's rolled 14.9 rifle damage, 17% crit hit damage, and 10% damage to targets out of cover. And we've got the talent, Boomerang. Some people might run this, others may prefer the Baker's Dozen. Moving across to our pistol, we've got our named TDI card 45. As you can see, this one comes with 15% weapon damage. And of course, it comes with a skill tier. And we've also got in sync. So moving down to the build, we're going to start off with the mask. As you can see, this is one of three pieces of Provident that we're running. And for the three piece bonus, we're going to be getting an extra 15% headshot damage, an extra 10% crit hit chance, and 15% crit hit damage. So looking at this mask, as you can see, we've got maxed out 15% weapon damage, 12% maxed out crit hit damage, 6% maxed out crit hit chance, and a 12% max crit hit damage mod. Next up, we're moving down to the chest, and we're going again for our second piece of providence. This time it's the named sacrifice. As you can see, we've got 15% weapon damage, 12% max crit hit damage, 6% max crit hit chance, and another 12% crit hit damage mod with the talent Perfect Glass Cannon. Amplified all damage you deal by 30%. Increased damage you take is up to 60%. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to best in slot, this is the piece, guys. Now, a lot of people don't like that incoming damage, but unfortunately, no risk, no reward. Moving down to the holster, we've gone with a Ferris. As you can see, with the one piece bonus, we're going to be getting an extra 10% assault rifle damage. This one's rolled 15% weapon damage, 12% crit hit damage, 6% crit hit chance. Cross to the knees, no surprises. Uh, Wolverlord, Fox's prayers. 15% weapon damage, 8% damage to targets out of cover, and max 12% crit hit damage. Again, best in slot. Moving up to our gloves, no surprises. We've got the Petrov named gloves, the contractors. We've got the one piece bonus, 10% LMG damage. Not really helping us out much, but this one is rolled with 15% weapon damage, 12% crit hit damage, and finally 8% damage to armor. Moving on to our backpack, it's probably not a surprise, our third piece of providence, and we've gone with the named providence bag, the gift. As you can see, this one's rolled 15% weapon damage, 12% crit hit damage, 6% crit hit chance. We've got an 11.8% crit hit damage mod on there, and of course it comes with the talent, Perfect Vigilance. Increased weapon damage by 25%, any incoming damage causes us to lose this for 3 seconds. Sure, most of you agree that overall, this is what most people would say is a maxed out God Road DPS build. Can't get any better. As far as the skills are concerned, as you can see, we're running a standard turret and drone setup. But unfortunately, as we've got an all, all red build, 
neither of these skills do really hit hard enough. So now we've got our best in slot DPS build, we're going to make three slight alterations to make this build go from an OK build to an OP build. Now the first change we're going to make, we're going to be starting off with the back. Yes, the gift, now I know you guys all think it is probably best in slot. Perfect Vigilance, 25% extra damage. You mean what we're thinking. Now the thing is with this, it's 25% weapon damage. That's all it's affecting is our weapons. Now bearing in mind, 50% of the time we're going to be behind cover. 50% of the time we're going to be doing damage. We're only getting that 25% bonus, max 50% of the time. Half the time where we're actually shooting at the enemies, we're actually taking incoming damage. So we're actually losing this buff. So at best, we're looking at getting this 25% bonus, maybe 25% of the time. So what are we going to swap it out for? Well, we're going to swap it out for the Memento bag. And what does that do for us? Yep, we're going to be losing one piece of Providence. So we are going to lose 12% crit hit damage. We're also going to be losing Vigilance, 25% extra weapon damage. But what are we going to gain instead of that? Now, as you can see, with the stacks as they are, we are running 6 reds. That means every time we get a kill, we're going to be gaining 30% weapon damage. That's actually 5% more than Vigilance. We've also got one blue car, so we've now got an extra 170k armor, making us a lot more tanky. But we're also getting an additional 10% bonus armor on each kill also. And it finally gives us a skill tier, bumping up our turret and our drone damage levels up a huge amount. Obviously, as we're collecting tokens, these bonuses are going to increase. Once we get up to maximum stats, we're looking at an extra 30% weapon damage on top of that again, so that's giving us 60% now. We can get up to 3% armor regen, and up to 35% skill efficiency. Now remember guys, skill efficiency, 35%, that's 35% extra skill damage, 35% extra skill duration. All of that, just for vigilance, for me, it's a no-brainer and a great swap. So the next thing we're going to swap out is the specialization. Now, as you can see here, originally we said we were going to go with the gunner. For that, we were getting 5% rate of fire. We are going to lose that. And we're also going to lose the 10% armor on kill. However, this 10% armor on kill has already been mitigated from the moment or back. As you can see, we're going to be getting 10% per trophy. So we're not really losing anything by this change. And what are we going to swap it for? Well, at this time, I've actually gone for the technician. Now, why have I done that? First off, straight off the bat, we're going to gain an extra skill to you. So we're not forfeiting any damage, we're not losing anything. But now we're giving our skills, our turret and our drone, an extra skill to you. So now they're up to skill to you too. Again, buffing their damage by huge amounts. And then just to top that off, we're getting an additional 10% skill damage from the specialization also. So huge bonuses for both of them and losing no damage. And now moving on to our final change. We're going to be swapping out our Eagle Bearer. Now, what are we going to be changing it for? In this case, I'm going with the mechanical animal. If we look at the base damage, 122k, there is only literally 2,000 per bullet to difference. If we look at the RPM, 750 compared to 720, virtually the same. Magazine size, again, virtually the same. This one is rolled 15% assault rifle damage, 21% maxed out health damage, both exactly the same as the Eagle Bearer. But on this one, we've got 6% damage to armor instead of the 10% we got on the Eagle Bearer. Now, remember, we've already got 8% from the Contractor Gloves as well. 14% damage to armor. This just melts enemies so quickly, guys. This actually outperforms my Eagle Bearer. But the main reason that we're using this is, of course, it's for the talent Future Perfect. Killing an enemy grants one skill to you for 19 seconds. Stacks up to three times. Kills at skill tier 6 proc overcharge for 15 seconds. Cooldown on overcharge is 90 seconds. Now I'm sure straight away a few of you guys are saying, hang on a minute, you currently have a level 2 tier drone and turret. You can now get an extra 3 skill tiers from the future perfect. That's only taking you up to skill tier 5. Don't you want another yellow somewhere on your build to get up to number 6? To proc that overcharge? Well, actually, guys, no, we don't. Because if we take another look back at the talent, the cooldown for this talent is only affected when we proc overcharge. So we don't want to hit skill tier 6. If we hit skill tier 6, we're going to proc the overcharge. It means we're going to lose this talent. 
If we keep it as it is now, with two skill tiers, we can get three kills, putting both of our turret and our drone up to a skill tier 5, doing virtually the same damage as a skill damage bit set up. And providing we don't get that extra kill, we're never proccing the overcharge. So there is zero cooldown. So providing we keep on getting our kills every 19 seconds, we can maintain a level 5 turret and drone by forfeiting nothing. So now if you step back and look at the build, we've still got our 6 tier, all red, best in slot, DPS build, doing ridiculous amounts of damage. We've now got a tier 5 drone and turret set up, ripping through content just like a skill damage build. We've got the extra survivability and the bonus armor coming from the Memento as well. It's the best of all worlds, guys. You really need to go out and give this a try. Rather than just hiding behind cover and letting your skills do your work, or popping your head out with an all red build, I mean, taking your life into your own hands. Now you can just sit back, you can put your drone out, you can put your turret out, doing huge amounts of damage. You can peek out and actually be satisfied by doing damage also. Honestly, guys, it is so OP, you need to see it to believe it. And the best thing is, you could take this principle off and any of the builds that you've got that you're winning all red, you can apply the same tactics to swap out mechanical animal, mental bag, specialization, and away you go, have max skills by losing zero damage. The only other way that you could possibly swap this out, like if you really don't want to lose the gift bag, or you don't want to use the memento for whatever reason, you could technically swap out the holster instead. Keep your gift bag, lose your holster. You could possibly go with the exotic waveform. That would give you the skill tier that you'd require. And it would also buff your turret and your drone by the 30%. So that's going to do it for today, guys. Big thank you to everyone that made it to the end of the video. That really is the best way to support the channel. If you did enjoy it, remember to hit that thumbs up. Any questions, drop them in the box below. But until next time, guys, stay safe. Most importantly, keep on grinding. Additional hostile contacts.